Good morning, little nerds. So today we are going to do a go to bed with me. <laughs> and I figured it was time to do my nighttime routine transitioning from summer into fall using my major fade solution system along with other products that I usually incorporate. You are such a loud flosser. I'm recording this after the video, but do not forget to subscribe to my channel and comment below as I answer the people who subscribe first. And also, if you have not already done so, head on over to pillowtalkderm.com to join the waitlist because we sold out during the pre-sale, but we have some very exciting news coming up pretty soon-ish. So make sure to sign up for the waitlist. Right, so let us jump into our nightly routine. It is very late, it's around 11.30 and I need to get ready to go to sleep. First tip is do your nighttime routine once you get home. Do not do as I do, do as I say. I think it is actually much more efficient for you guys to get your nighttime routine in once you get home and you're not, you know you're not going out for the night so that you get the most face time with your products and the ingredients in your products for them to actually achieve what you want them to achieve. My first step in my routine is basically getting all of this gunk off my face. I love Vanna Cream because it's an easy cleanser, but is it the best one for removing makeup? It is not. So that is why I always preface it with a micellar water. It's my version of a double cleanse because I do not personally like oil-based cleansers. I never feel like it cleans my face well enough and I don't like the squeakiness of an oil on my face. So I started with Bioderma's micellar water. I'm trying to be more eco-friendly and minimizing how many cotton pads I use. So then I found these Garnier Skincare Micellar Cleansing Eco Pads that are reusable pads. So you're supposed to basically soak this guy. I've already washed it. They say wash it before you start and then you can kind of go to town like you would a regular one and then once you're done using it wash it with soap and water you can even apparently toss it in the what's it called <laughs> washing machine i think it's actually nicer than a cotton pad i'm not going to lie it really does clean better in one go compared to the million of cotton pads i used to use nice nice uh, nice so then we wash with cleanser so this is really one step. I actually do like to use the cleanser on my face completely dry. My hands are a little bit wet, so it kind of primed a little bit the cleanser. I wash my face, I'll be right back. Face is washed and cleaned for the night. We have a fresh base. So tonight I'm going to walk you guys through how I use um, the major face solution system, how it has really simplified my routine a lot. And I start with my exfoliating flash mask. I'll put on, and I want to show you guys how I use this. Uh, my sister actually tried rubbing it in her face and <laughs> it just wasn't great. Let's just put it that way. Because it is a 15% glycolic acid mask mixed with lactic acid and tranexamic acid. So it is a strong mask. So I get a nice layer of this all over my face. Oh, it's tingling already. Now the interesting thing is, some people say they don't feel the tingle and some people tell me they do feel the tingle. I am one of these people that every once in a while, if my skin is a little bit on more on the dry side, I will feel it more than other times. That's like the only correlation I could find with my own tingle. Maybe it has to do with my skin barrier being slightly inflamed. And that's why I feel it. Maybe because it's like the air has gotten drier and the heaters are on now. And I have felt a little bit more overall. So maybe that's why, but you definitely feel it. And the first like, 15 seconds can be a little spicy where you're like, ooh. But then it just goes bzzz, and it kind of subsides and I just let it sit. So as I'm letting this guy sit, I'm gonna actually not waste, put anything else I have on the back of my hands because why not exfoliate the backs of our hands? It's sort of my MO because the hands are really this eyes of your aging process you can really see a lot through people's hands and so why not exfoliate the back i just put a little bit of the rest on the back of my hands and i let it sit tip if you're very sensitive i would say test it do a patch test first do it on that one night wash it off see how your skin does the next day if you're super sensitive you can repeat the patch test a second time 
if you're fine after that first patch test, then go to town, apply it. You see how I put a thin layer and I didn't rub it in? You can time how long you keep the flash mask on. Those who are sensitive, maybe try just five minutes the first night. I just go straight to like 15 minutes and I do this two to three times a week at night. And then I have let it sit on my face for at least 25 minutes and it was fine, nothing happened. Because at that point it just kind of like acclimates to your skin. I would say five minutes if you're very nervous and you can then jump up to 15, 20 minutes at most. But while I'm waiting, and because my lips are getting dry, I will take Waleda and I will just baste. I'm not going to use my exfoliating mask on my lips because it's too strong, but I don't feel the need to exfoliate my lips yet because my lips are not that chapped. They start to get more chapped in like November when it really gets colder outside. I'm going to let the lip basting sit on my lips. I'm going to let the mask sit on my face and I will be right back. All right, so as this is just drying, I have like two more minutes. On the nights that I exfoliate, I usually tend to avoid using any sort of prescription tretinoin. I'm usually using a prescription tretinoin right now, on average like four or five times a week at night. So the nights that I exfoliate, I tend to avoid this only because it is a very strong mask. I would say if you guys are a little bit more on the adventurous side and your skin is not that sensitive, you can definitely try to use an over-the-counter retinol, something much more lightweight like um, In Beauty Project has a retinol, L'Oreal has their 0.3% retinol as well, Skin Medica has a retinol, or even SkinCeuticals that you guys can use on the nights where you're not using your prescription tretinoin if you're not sensitive you can try to use it on the nights that you're masking. But if you are sensitive, consistency is key and less is more. I'd rather you be consistent with the retinol than like let your face burn off because again, it is a strong mask. So the mask itself right now is kind of done tingling at all together. As you can see, it kind of dries off. I'm gonna go ahead and wash it off. My lips are nice and plump and juicy. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And yeah, let's go. All right, face is washed, mask is done. I have gotten my glycolic, lactic, and tranexamic acid in. So I am exfoliated and I've started by kind of calming my melanocytes down through the use of tranexamic acid. And then I go into prescriptions. So if you guys have any sort of prescription, at this point you would use it. Personally, I love Finacea gel, which is a prescription azelaic acid love azelaic acid 15 percent it's probably the only formulation i've ever used that doesn't pill if you can't get your hands on a prescription formula you guys can use azelaic acid like polish choice 10 percent why am i talking about azelaic acid because i did not include it in my major fade solution system there are three ingredients i did not include one is retinols because i feel like you need to titrate your retinols in order for you to really know what you can or cannot tolerate. So retinols are not included in the system and that was done intentionally so you guys know how much you need and the percent that you can tolerate and how to incorporate it into your routine. The second ingredient I did not incorporate was hydroquinone. So this whole system stemmed from my own experience with melasma and I was pregnant and breastfeeding so I could not use hydroquinone. And so I tried to figure out with over-the-counter products, what could I use in order to get the best effects? And this is how I created this to simplify, no joke, a like 11, 10 step routine. So I didn't put hydroquinone here because number one, you cannot all use hydroquinone and if you're pregnant, you can't use it. Number two, hydroquinone has to be really at 4% in order to have effects and that is a prescription. And number three, when using hydroquinone in order to get the best results over time you have to use it in a very cyclical fashion where you go on it then you go off it then you go on it then you go off it if you are on hydroquinone for too long it can actually not work great for your skin and that is why i did not include those three ingredients so right now after i've used the flash mask i'll go ahead and use azelaic acid so again the the finacea is beautiful over the counter this is one by paula's choice Azelaic acid is a little bit tricky because it pills. So I personally just use it at night because I'm not so worried about the elegancy or eleganceness of the products at night because I'm going to go to sleep. Um, but I don't use it in the morning because I don't want to make it look, I don't want my skin to look dull or flat after using it. 
and I definitely don't want my products to pill. It is a suspension and that powder, once the product dries out, kind of sits on top of your face and that's why you get that pilling effect with azelaic acid. So once azelaic is in, I go for my hyper serum. Love this guy. This is a true powerhouse. It has kojic acid, licorice root, 5% niacinamide, glycerin. It also has a diglucosyl gallic acid, which also helps with brightening as well as arbutin. So, and there's a couple of other stuff if you really look closely at the inky list. So I just get this straight on my face right here. Fours is really all you really need to get it all over your face. Now, as a small brand, it's very expensive to get claims approved. And I wanted to get clinical studies on the products um, first and foremost. So that's what I decided to spend my money on. I did not want to spend my money on getting a claim that it's safe to use with eyes because it was expensive. However, me as Shireen has been using it under her eyes the whole time and it's been fine. But as a brand, we will never say, we'll never push that because we cannot claim it. But hopefully once the brand gets bigger, I definitely want to test for it so we can get that claim on our package because it has really helped my under eyes. And it's so nice and just juicy and it helps to brighten the under eyes that like, I really feel like it has helped me. And you guys have commented on several videos that you look more rested or whatnot. And I swear to God, I've been using a lot of this under my eyes. And once the serum is in, I seal it all in with my active seal. And this guy just basically makes everything get into your skin. It is a hybrid of a gel moisturizer and a lightweight moisturizer. It's not overpowering at all, but do not be fooled. It's not just a moisturizer. This one has a vitamin C ester in it as well. Um, and it's a misconception that you only have to use vitamin C during the day. You can absolutely use it both during the day and at night. And I definitely use this in the morning under my sunscreen. So it has simplified my routine. Now, I just want to add one thing. If you live in a very dry environment or you have extremely dry skin, you might feel like you need a little bit more to quench your skin. And you can add on top of this a thicker basic moisturizer like I have over here by Avino. It's, they're actually, it's the same as their Common Restore gel moisturizer that I love, but it's their balm. So it's much thicker. I'll show you guys. Or you can baste your face with the Roche Posay, the Cicaplast, the Bone B5 that I often talk about. I personally find this to be just perfect and enough, but if you feel like you're a little dry, especially on the high points of your face, you know, you can definitely add a little bit of this balm. It doesn't hurt. It's basically loaded in colloidal oatmeal. And so it works, especially if you have sensitive skin. Et voila! My much more condensed skincare routine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned how to incorporate your own prescriptions and other products into this routine. And as always, have a great Saturday. I will catch you guys next week. Let me know in the comment section what you guys want to learn about next.